All right. Let's take a look at what I've got for us this week. So I picked up a handful of stuff today. Uh, nothing that needs to go in depth. You know, I've got a new DC Comics Vampires uh, Battle Beast from the pages of Invincible. Uh, let's see here. We got another Gunslinger Spawn issue and uh, Darth Vader number 25. But I'm going to show you guys my top picks for this week, if you will. First up is a book that's written by an actor that I'm actually quite fond of. A lot of people might recognize him as the uh, Russian-speaking security guy in Ant-Man. He was Scott's, uh, one of his security workers, most notably probably known as Polka Dot Man in uh, The Suicide Squad by uh, James Gunn. David Dastmalkian, I think is how you say his last name. He writes a book called Count Crowley. Subtitle here is Amateur Midnight Monster Hunter because uh, that's fairly accurate. Count Crowley is a monster hunter, uh, a very uh, reluctant one at that. Uh, this is the second series. Uh, the first series was also four issues. This is a four issue mini series, but this is a fun read. To, I technically about monster hunting, um, but with some dark comedy involved. I love. Dost Malkian's sense of humor, and that's, I think, what really draws me into this book. Uh, worth picking up. You could probably find them easier on digital. The first series has been out for a couple years now. Might be slightly hard to get your hands on. So uh, check out Comixology, or I think Dark Horse has a subscription series as well. Uh, but worth checking out. Fun, fun read. Next up is a book that uh, I've talked about before because I love horror anthologies, and that's The Silver Coin. Each issue is a standalone, which kind of ties together an overarching story, but each story is a standalone, revolves around the curse of this silver coin that people in some way or another get their hands on. It's like a, G it's like a, a, a monkey paw, if you will. You make the wish, and it grants your wish, but then something awful happens at the same time, right? So that has a lot to do uh, with the silver coin here. It looks like we're dealing with zombies, uh, zombie soldiers of a certain era, if you know what I mean. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, these stories are, uh, once again, standalone issues, and it doesn't really matter where you pick up this series at because they haven't fully explained the background of the coin or given any context to its cursing, really. Some snippets here and there in individual issues, but this is definitely a series you could pick up right now and understand completely how everything works. Next up is another standalone Hellboy in the BPRD issue. Uh, time is a river. This is um, hard to explain. It's kind of an acid trip. Hellboy goes through some very mysterious um, adventures in his time, if you will, and this one is absolutely no different. Uh, time is a River is a good reference of like the fluidity of how strange this comic is. Like, look at the melting houses. There was even a slight Salvador Dali reference, uh, visual reference in this issue as well. Don't ask me what the book is about because I got to go through it a second time to make sure that I picked up on it all. But um, it's quite a fun read and I'm really enjoying this new artist that they're putting in on the Hellboy issues. I love Mike Mignola's artwork, but it is not always the easiest to follow. But the artist that they have in this issue is doing a great job. So Hellboy standalone issues are always worth jumping into because... Everybody understands the concept of Hellboy, and he's had various adventures throughout his whole life, and uh, this is just catching up on them. So once again, standalone issue, uh, just a great starting point if you wanted to get into Hellboy comics. And now we have issue number two of the new limited series Black Adam uh, comics that are out now. This individual right here is the new heir to the Shazam powers. Uh, what do they call him? Theo, Theo Adam, I think is, is Black Adam's like human name right now. He's what you call the Shah of Kondok. He's the leader of Kondok. And so, uh, Adam is dying. And so he needs somebody to pass his powers on to. Picks this young individual right here. A little bit of a spoiler here. I mean, that's, that was at the end of the last issue. A little bit of a spoiler here. This book now then becomes, uh, something of a minor key 
because we see the first appearance of a new uh, holder of the Shazam powers. I thought it was strange, the name choice, and they do make reference to it in the comic itself. So I didn't, it wasn't just me that found it odd. But this person of color right now, whenever he says the word Shazam, turns into what they now call White Adam. Not a great name for a person of color, right? He himself makes the reference of, we don't do this thing anymore of black equals bad, white equals good. It's not how it works. So I don't know that he's necessarily recognizing and going by the name White Adam, which I hope he really doesn't. I hope he comes up with his his own name. So uh, towards the end of the book, they don't exactly acknowledge the fact that he is, quote, White Adam. We'll see how this goes, but uh, his white suit, the white Shazam looking suit looked pretty awesome. And uh, I'm excited to see where this goes from here. And I know I've said, I've talked about it a lot uh, since the beginning of doing this video series, but new Fantastic Four number two is out now. And this series opened my eyes to something from the 80s. This group of superheroes getting together to be a version of the Fantastic Four. I loved it so much only because I just truly have not cared about the Fantastic Four before. So issue number two of this series is out now. It does not say if it's a limited series. It does not say one of or two of five, two of six, whatever. I don't know that Marvel does that a lot. But uh, if this is an ongoing series, I am excited for it. Speaking of which, I've showed you guys in the past, I got the collected version of the original series that the new Fantastic Four appeared in, and I had mentioned like I was on the hunt for them. Well, here they are. <laughs> I actually got the individual issues. Fantastic Four 347 through 349. I just really love that cover right there. That is a great cover, right? Oh, so fun. So this group of Fantastic Four, I'm into it. And it's hard for me to really get into new Marvel comics. And I guess it's hard to say that this is a new Marvel comic since they're hearkening back to a series of comics that, that happened 30 years ago. And so lastly, we're going to try something out. Because I have a hard time getting into a lot of new Marvel comics series, uh, I've decided to try something. We're going to do a little bit of an experiment here. Now, this is a package of sealed comic books. I got these from Walmart. You've probably seen us unpackage some of these uh, during live streams. And I've had, I've got a couple of these still sitting around for future live streams, but I have a couple Marvel ones. And I thought I'm going to put them face down, shuffle them up, grab one. Okay, I don't know what's in this and I, I can't see what's in this thing. I haven't looked at it yet, but whatever is in this package, I'm going to follow through with the storyline of whatever books are in this Marvel package of comics. I honestly don't know what's in this, so I'm hoping that this might open me up to, to getting outside of my comfort zone, my DC Comics comfort zone, if you will, and start following through on some Marvel characters that maybe I don't care about just because I don't know about. Let's see what's in this package. All right, I'm going to open this up face down. I don't know. I don't know what's in this. They do not make these things easy to open. Good God. Hopefully I didn't mess any comics up. So they're face down. Here's the cardboard from the back. And we have, oh, Inferno. Okay. It's a new X-Men series that's out right now. New storyline. This is a thick book. This is a $6 book right here. $5.99 cover price. This is the variant cover. Now, one of the fun things about these Walmart packs is that sometimes they have Walmart-only variant covers on them. Not to say they're worth any more collectability, but probably less circulation. So Inferno, I am unfamiliar with what's going on in this storyline, but I do know it's a recent series. And being issue four, it shouldn't take me too long to catch up and then follow through with this storyline. So, it's you know, it's taken me... A long time to really get back into the X-Men and I think this is just another good step forward so I'm gonna follow through on this all right uh, looks like there's only three books in here so the second one now is Thor Thor number 19 wow okay uh, God of Hammers starts here. It is the first one in a storyline. So this is going to make it easy. I don't know what issue Thor is on right now. It can't be that far behind 
Uh, this one is, let's see here. Uh, this came out in January of 2022. So I've got a couple months to catch up on. Um, this storyline by today's timestamp might already be over because a lot of these only run maybe five issues or so. But uh, I'm going to follow through on this storyline and it might actually help me get more into Thor. Not so that I don't like the character, but I don't follow the character. So this is a good start. I'm happy with that. All right. And now my last one here. Let's see... Wolverine, Patch, oh, okay. Uh, this also goes back to an era of Wolverine when he was known as Patch. And I don't know if he's come back to that uh, character in the modern times or if this is, you know, much like the new Fantastic Four going back to a certain period in time. But this is issue number one. And I have just recently started seeing these on the, on the stands at the comic book shop. So this might only be on the second or third issue now, which is an easy catch up as well. So once again, oh, back here, it says the variant edition. So another uh, variant edition at uh, Walmart. Very cool. Okay. So this will be another easy catch up as well. And I have not cared about Wolverine quite some time. I'm not going to lie. Wolverine to me seems to be on that Deadpool range of just being oversaturated and overrated you know so uh easy catch up on here so i have these three books that uh, i'm going to follow through with inferno thor and patch and uh maybe that will get me a little bit deeper into the mythos of marvel comics so that is all that i have for you guys today if you have read any of these books uh give me a heads up if if uh, i'm wasting my time <laughs> that's upside down if, uh, if I'm wasting my time or if I should follow through with the storylines, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll be interested to know what you guys think. And uh, next week, I will not have a video for you guys. We are going to be at Tampa Bay Comic Con uh, doing some filming there. So I will catch you guys on the following week after that, okay? So I'll see you guys in two weeks. I'll talk to you guys soon.